Some years ago, I had the privilege of meeting up with um, a bunch of church leaders in Brazil that were part of a, an apostolic movement throughout South America. And God really joined our hearts uh, very quickly together. One of the things that we really were excited about as, as we talked was that uh, we're called to be of one heart, one mind, and one purpose. And whenever we spoke, it seemed like we had one m mind. Uh, our theology on so many things was almost identical. Uh, we had one heart. We, we really formed a, a deep friendship and a deep love for, for each other very quickly. And we had one purpose, which was to build the Church of Jesus Christ in a way that conforms to scripture and, and glorifies him. And as Andrew Selly often says, uh, changes the way the world see ch sees church. And that's, that's our mandate as a church. And so the, these leaders were so excited to come and visit Josh Jen and see what it was all about and see with, whether what I was saying was true. And so uh, 25, I think, uh, leaders came across and spent uh, two weeks in Cape Town. They, they came for training, but they also came to, to sit in on meetings and see what this thing called Josh Gem was all about. And they were blown away. They were blown away by the people. They weren't blown away by how anointed the elders were. They were blown away by the people. They were blown away by how the people were involved in, in getting people saved, how the people ministered, how the people served, how the people gave themselves to the Lord and then to other people. And it really impacted them and, and cemented our relationship. And we've been working together in many ways ever since. But sometime after that visit, uh, I was there in Brazil talking, and one of these leaders said to me, Mike, he said, why is it that our theology is the same? Our, our doctrine is the same. We have elders like you have elders. Uh, we're part of an apostolic movement like you're an, part of an apostolic movement. Why are our people so different to your people? And of course, I could have said because they're Brazilian, not South African, or um, whatever. There, there was a hundred reasons that I could have given. But I, I was quickly praying and said, Lord, give me your answer. And the, the answer that, that I felt the Lord drop into my heart was this. And I said, the critical difference between Josh Jen and your churches is we have deacons and you don't. See, it doesn't matter how good the elders are. If there aren't deacons, the church will not be properly healthy. The church will not be built according to the blueprint and the pattern that Jesus has given. You know, Paul, the apostle who considered himself a master builder, says this in 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 10. He says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it, but each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay a foundation any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. But if what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. So Paul says, I'm a master builder. I build on a foundation. And when we look at a building, um, you know, the foundation we always teach this is, is important, it's critical. A, a cracked foundation will, will lead to a faulty building. And scripture tells us Jesus is the cornerstone. It tells us that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. But something has to be built on that foundation. Um, it's not good just having a foundation and leaving it there. And so buildings need strong pillars. They need strong columns to, to support the roof and, and to build around. And in many ways, the deacons in the church are those strong pillars. They're the support structure. They're the strength of the building. They are their um, solid aspects of the building that other parts can be built around. We see in the book of Acts, um, in Acts chapter six, where, where deacons are appointed for the first time, we see that as the church has grown quickly, so there's been an increase of people, there's been an increase of problems. With people come problems. Uh, we've often said that uh, 
Funeral homes have very free, few problems. Maternity wards have a lot of problems. Wherever there's growth, where there, wherever there's new life, there will come problems. And we see that in the early church. It's no exception. And with these problems comes the potential for catastrophe. Uh, but it's the deacons who, who, are, who are set in place and they help to resolve those problems, but they do far, far more. And the language of Acts is quite interesting here. Um, in uh, Acts 2, for example, it says, the Lord added daily to those who were being saved. And the language uh, in the early parts of Acts is, is one of, an, of addition. But as soon as the deacons are put in place in Acts 6, the language changes subtly and it says, the Lord multiplied. And of course, multiplication is often far quicker and far greater than addition. And so we see that once deacons are set in place and deacons are doing their jobs and deacons are fulfilling their God-given function properly, the church can grow more rapidly, not just in numbers, but in health. Um, matters can be resolved more quickly. Uh, the communication channels between the elders and the people uh, are improved and so on and so forth. And so master builders, those who understand uh, how a building should be constructed will make sure that their columns and their pillars are put in place and are strong and firm and sure and can carry the load uh, that they're required to. And so as we begin this deacons training series, uh, I would ask you whether you're a deacon or you're a potential deacon um, to really give yourselves to these, this training series, really allow the Lord to work into you and reveal in you what he wants to do in you and through you. And also to understand just how important the office of deacon is to the church of Jesus Christ becoming what he wants her to be. Without deacons, the church will not grow properly. Without deacons, the church will not be as healthy as it should be. Without deacons, there will not be the unity uh, that Jesus requires. And these are all things that come as a byproduct of having a great deacon team. Josh Jen, I can say with full conviction, has got an incredible deacon team. And for those that have been serving as deacons so far, Thank you for your commitment, your service, your love for lo the Lord and for his people. And for those who are potentially deacons, understand this. What the Lord is calling you to is a glorious thing. Uh, it's a costly thing, but with it comes a promise of a better resurrection. So give yourself fully to these training videos, understand the importance of the office, and let's come together and work to make the church of Jesus Christ as wonderful and as beautiful as he intends it to be and let us build according to the blueprint that he's given.